Try it now. Olivia, now available in store. It was designed to improve brushing. It ended up changing everything. I think you're gonna wanna see this. I know you're not gonna believe this. Get ready. You got me wrapped around your finger. To fall head over heels. Hats and tents. With your next reality favourite. This is where the magic happens. Woo! I'm ready. Is everything I've ever dreamed of. Some of the best moments are not scripted. You ain't ever gonna get this hand out. And they're all in one place. Don't feel that if you want. Both from material and it. On Britbox. The latest news from around the country now, it's Wales at Six with Jonathan Hill. On tonight's Wales at Six, a legend laid to rest. We remember the life of Phil Bennett, one of rugby's greatest players. I'll be live at Parker Scarlet's as tributes are paid to one of Wales's most famous fly halves. Also tonight, learning to love thy neighbour, the Welsh school that's welcomed Ukrainian refugees to live on site. It's been really nice having them around. I mean, all classes have had uh, pu new pupils in their class and it's just been nice having them around and seeing them safe and happy. And Ruth's been visiting the Welsh island that's home to our largest colony of gannets. Hello, good evening. Described as one of the greatest ever rugby players, Wales, Llanelli and Lions legend Phil Bennett was today laid to rest. Current and former players and fans from far and wide gathered at Parker Scarlet's for a special service. Many wore rugby shirts to honour his incredible legacy. Our Swansea correspondent Dean Thomas Welch was there and is at the stadium for us this evening. Dean, a wonderful send-off for a true icon of the game. Yeah, that's right, John. He was an absolute icon. And when you think of the most iconic sports stars, to ever wear the number 10 on the back of their shirt, you'll think of Pele, you'll think of Maradona, and you'll think of Phil Bennett. Now, there may be some people in the audience uh, this evening who may not have been old enough to witness uh, Phil Bennett playing in his prime, but he really was that good. He really was a global superstar. But he wasn't just a superstar on the pitch. He was loved by everyone off the field as well, which was shown by everyone who turned out for him today. One of the greatest sportsmen in Welsh history, Phil Bennett made his name on the hallow Clinetley rugby turf. Today, thousands turned out at Parker Scarlet's to show respect and appreciation for the man affectionately known as Benny. Bennett's teammates, players past and present, formed a guard of honour at his memorial service. In the stands, fans wearing rugby jerseys came to say a final goodbye to a player who had provided so many wonderful memories. He had time for everybody. Great man, great player, legend. Phil Bennett, the outstanding man. He is uh, number one for me. Everybody yes. loved him. And yeah, it's just nice to come and pay your respects. Yeah. I think it's very important that the, the Scarlet family, as it were, get together, not only to support the Scarlet when they play rugby, but in memory of such a, a great rugby player, full of talent and a true Scarlet through and through. W what a legend. Phil Bennett was a standout figure during Wales' golden era of rugby in the 1970s. A fly half with dazzling skill and pace, he helped Wales clinch two grand slams during his 29 caps, as well as being part of the Clenetley side that famously beat New Zealand. He would also star during Lions tours of South Africa and New Zealand. The man who captained Clinetley on the day they beat the All Blacks paid tribute to his teammate and good friend. So God bless you, boy.
Oh, you know, as I said, I've been lucky enough to have played with some great players. But to me, Phil Bennett was the best of them all. He was a one-off. He was an exceptional player and a gentleman. He always kept his feet on the ground, which is important, and that's how people loved him for. A church service was later held in Bennett's home village of Fell in Boyle. Among those paying their respects were Wales internationals Lee Halfpenny, Jonathan Davis and Ken Owens, as well as Clenetley and Wales legends Dwayne Peel and Robin McBride. He made an impression on uh, wherever he went to play, you know, New Zealand, South Africa. Um, everybody remembers him for what he did and, uh, on the pitch, you know, and uh, he never forgot his roots. And uh, I think that's what uh, the feeling you got here today, the... Um, you know, the words they repeated time and time again, loyalty, family, a community, but just a great man. On the field, Phil Bennett was loved and adored by fans from all over the world. Off the field, his character and personality meant he was equally as cherished. Today, a rugby community said goodbye to one of the best. Well, Phil Bennett died at the age of 73 after a long battle with illness. At today's memorial, we heard a lot of stories from former teammates uh, about uh, Phil Bennett's life on and off the field. One of the most famous was when Phil Bennett was in the changing rooms talking to his Welsh teammates ahead of a game against England. And he gave a famous speech in which he said, the English have come and they've taken our water, they've taken our coal and they've taken our steel. They take our homes and they live in them for two weeks of the year. What have the English ever done? for us. But it wasn't just what he did off the field. Who remembers those famous sidesteps that started one of the greatest tries ever to be scored in rugby as the Barbars scored that fabulous try against New Zealand. It's been watched millions of times online and on places uh, like YouTube. But whatever Phil Bennett did off the field, what he did off the field had equal measure as well. He loved his family and he loved his community. And today his community came out to say their final goodbye. Dean, thank you for sharing that with us. Dean Thomas Welch in Llanelli. Elsewhere tonight, access to free lateral flow tests will be extended in Wales until the end of July. Health Minister Elined Morgan says tests will be available to anyone showing symptoms of COVID. An estimated one in 45 people in Wales are now infected. Rail passengers are being warned of more heavy disruption tomorrow due to a third day of strike action. Most Transport for Wales services will not be running due to a dispute between the RMT Union and Network Rail. Great Western Railway is running a very limited service on the South Wales main line between Cardiff and London. Meanwhile, drivers are being urged to plan ahead as the M487 crossing bridge closes for the weekend. The bridge will shut to all traffic from 7 this evening until 6am on Monday. The closure is to allow for essential inspections of the cables which support the 55-year-old bridge. The leader of the Welsh Conservatives, Andrew R.T. Davies, has said the Prime Minister must look in the mirror and ask himself whether he should stay in office. It follows a disastrous double by-election defeat in West Yorkshire and Devon last night, which has again thrown Boris Johnson's leadership into question. Now, political editor Adrian Masters joins me now. Adrian, is Boris Johnson losing the support of leading Welsh Conservatives then? Yes and no. Um, certainly in public, they're inching towards the kind of thing they've been saying in private, which is that uh, it is probably time for him to move on. He said that he's not planning to go anywhere anytime soon. But what people like Andrew R.T. Davis uh, are, and others are doing is recognising the reality of the situation, the very difficult situation they find themselves in, which is that, as the by-elections that you referred to showed, as the local elections here in Wales last month and other by-elections by before that have shown, that um, the Conservative 
Conservatives are losing significant numbers of voters for a variety of issues, but mainly because of Boris Johnson. There's nobody that will actually uh, argue with that, but he won't step aside. Now, I mentioned the local elections here uh, last month. The Conservatives lost quite a few seats. Mm. They lost their, their, the one council, control of the one council, Monmouthshire, that they ran in Wales. And the leader of that, the former leader, as he is now, mm. of Monmouthshire Council, um, has criticised Boris Johnson, has previously called for him to go. Today, I asked Richard John if he still thinks the Prime Minister is the problem. To be fair to the Prime Minister, I think the global leadership he's shown uh, over Ukraine has been absolutely faultless and re really inspirational. Um, but it's increasingly clear that the, um, the view amongst party members, amongst the wider public, is that his personal conduct over Partygate continues to dog him. And that, that is not going away. We're in the seventh month of Partygate now. Uh, we've still got another report to come. And people are really fed up with this. And I think it's increasingly clear that sooner or later, MPs have to make a difficult decision. And I think it's up to them how long and drawn out this is going to be. So how likely is it that Boris Johnson will resign? It, it could be long and drawn out, as mm. uh, Richard John was saying, because the Prime Minister said he won't resign. And really, Boris Johnson isn't like other Prime Ministers. The, the usual uh, rules of politics don't seem to apply to him. And other, uh, other Prime Ministers would well have resigned at this stage in, uh, in the number of controversies and difficulties that he's facing. It is difficult because there has been a failed attempt by Conservative mm. MPs to remove him, and they're thought unlikely to try to do that again. But but there's been one big resignation from the cabinet today. If there were another, that could cause him problems. In the meantime, it's the Welsh Conservatives and the rest of the party that continue to have the problems. Watch this space. Adrian, thank you very much indeed. Well, I hope you've got that Friday feeling. Ruth is here with the weekend forecast. I think the weather didn't get the Friday feeling memo, John. You know what I'm going to say, mm. don't you? Yeah, I'm sorry to say the blue skies and the sunshine we've enjoyed this week are long gone. We've got wet and windy conditions and it's going to turn a lot cooler for the weekend as well. Sorry about that. See you in a few minutes. Well, never mind. We'll be catching up with Yanni flying the flag for Pride Week on a wondrous wander around Wales. But first tonight, a scheme which helps young adults with learning disabilities and autism find work experiences launched in Cardiff. Project Search has teamed up with two special schools, a scholar in Penarth and Woodlands High School in Ely, to help pupils get their first taste of the world of work. From portering to housekeeping, the interns have been busy learning new skills in the biggest hospital in the country. Here's Kate Lewis. OK, Dylan, could you yeah. unpack this box for me and put them all away in the robot, please? OK. Lovely, thank you. An important task in this pharmacy department and one that 18-year-old Dylan Royal takes great pride in doing. Dylan is one of seven interns on placement here at University Hospital of Wales in Cardiff and he's relishing the opportunity. School is getting a bit boring and... I want to be an adult in the real world. How has this project made you feel more like an adult? Um, it made me an adult because I have uh, my own responsibilities, time management, I know to get onto a bus and off a bus. Dylan was a pupil at Woodlands High School in Cardiff before he signed up to this project. It's not only given him experience, but is helping him flourish. Change a lot when I started. The biggest change I've seen so far is my confidence and my talking skills. 19-year-old Alberto is also coming to the end of his second 10-week placement. He's found that being autistic has brought with it some benefits to the working environment. I could say being autistic has been helpful to the teamwork sometimes. I mean, definitely when it comes to problem solving where it's uh, what we do here is just sort of just flicks really easily to me, whereas others it becomes a bit harder for them to think of. Sometimes out of the box, it becomes a bit easier for me in that way. It's also made it easier to figure out future career paths. I've learned that I've really enjoyed doing some, you know, physical labour, thinking on my feet. So I always naturally look towards jobs and work towards in different degrees and different things like that towards a job that suits me. Cardiff and Vale Health Board join forces with Cardiff Council as the host business, 
offering placements all across the hospital, from post room to portering. While it's proving a success for the individuals, it's also benefiting the hospital too. They uh, turn up on time every single day. They work hard when they're here. They're always looking for things to do. They know that there's, oh, there's always jobs to be done and they're always happy to do whatever we ask of them. And the hard work is certainly paying off. Some of our students have already been successful and have been employed by the health board, which we're so proud of. Um, some students are awaiting um, interview or interview results because they've already been interviewed. And then other students are moving on to college. And then we've got a couple of students, we're not quite sure what their pathway is, but that's our, our job now. So we'll support them at every step. This pilot project has proved such a success that more young people will get to follow in the footsteps in September. Kate Lewis, ITV News, Cardiff. Keep up the good work, guys. Now, you may remember back in March, we visited St Mary's Primary School in Chepstow, which was preparing to welcome Ukrainian refugees. When the war started and people were forced to flee their homes, the school community knew it had to do something to help and began refurbishing an old bungalow on the school grounds. Three months on and a family now call it their home. Owain Phillips paid them a visit. All are welcome is the motto of St Mary's School here in Chepstow. And it's proved to be more than just words. After they've welcomed over a dozen Ukrainian refugees into their community, with existing students feeling it's given them a greater appreciation of different cultures. It's been really nice having them around. I mean, all classes have had uh, pe new pupils in their class and it's just been nice having them around and seeing them safe and happy. And how have you found it, Kelly? Well, I've enjoyed having new friends, especially in my class, because there are two girls and I'm friends with them. And it's like, it's, it's happy that they're safe now. We've got a few children now throughout our school, new pupils that have joined our community. And it's really enhanced um, the school ethos. Uh, the children have embraced the sort of challenge of helping children learn a language and integrate into play and class thing, uh, time. So it's been really beneficial to our school. It's, it's given us another, uh, another dimension. This would be the living room. Uh... I visited the school back in March when they were preparing this house on the school grounds to welcome an Ukrainian family. Fast forward three months and the house is now a home to Lilia and her six children. The family fled eastern Ukraine and arrived in Wales five weeks ago. Her friend translated for us. I tried to translate a little bit, yeah? Uh, Lila said that uh, she is uh, trying to use to live here, yeah? She and her family, her boys, like to live here. They, uh, especially her uh, sons, they have a lot of friends in school in their age, of course, and uh, they try to uh, organize their life here uh, in, in the best way. Lilia likes cooking and says she hopes to start a business selling Ukrainian food here. We hope that in your country it will be uh, next favorite dishes. <laughs> You hope, this, you hope that everyone will eat this food eventually. Yes, of course, everyone likes it. Everyone likes it, 100%, 100% yeah? we expected, yeah. The war in Ukraine has dominated the headlines for months, with many feeling powerless to help. But this community has taken practical steps to support refugee families and in turn develop their own understanding of different cultures too. Owain Phillips, ITV News, in Chepstow. This is Wales at six. The time now is 17 minutes past the hour. Tonight's top story. A service of remembrance has taken place for former Wales and Lions legend Phil Bennett. Current and former players and hundreds of fans gathered at Parker Scarlet's to honour his incredible legacy. And still to come on the ITV Evening News. Coming up, what is next for the Prime Minister? And I do hereby declare that Richard John Ford is duly elected.
The Conservatives suffer two bruising by-election defeats and an early morning resignation, but the PM vows to fight on. And today might not get any easier for Boris Johnson as he meets Prince Charles in Rwanda. Plus, Katie Price avoids being put behind bars for breaching a restraining order against her ex. Join me for those stories and much more at 6.30. And we'll have your weekend weather forecast uh, in just a few moments. But first, a man from Powys is marking Pride Month by walking more than 1,000 miles around Wales. Jani Foldy, who grew up in Hungary, set off from Brecon at the beginning of June, heading first to Chepstow before walking across to St David's. Jani has now made his way up to Atlangotlin, and I'm delighted to say that Rob Shelley joins him there this evening. Rob, what an achievement! <laughs> John, the interview about to happen on Platform One. Well, put it this way. Uh, for most of us, if you've travelled between North and South Wales, you normally give up the will to live round about Bilth Wells. Well, here is a man who is an absolute exception to the rule. He's already walked 35 miles today. I walked 200 yards from the car park. Yeah, you're looking remarkably chilled, considering you're 800 miles into Wales. So Thank you far. so much. Walking for pride, we can see with the t-shirt the astonishing banner as well. In yes. fact, can we claim you as like the world's longest pride mart so far this month? I don't know, we need to check with the Guinness World Book of Records, I think. <laughs> we might write in. So how's the journey been? It's been absolutely amazing. Like, I cannot thank the people who I met uh, so far. Everyone has been amazing and uh, as, as a spiritual journey for me, I have faith in humanity <laughs> again. <laughs> and you still have faith in humanity 800 yes. miles in, which is fantastic. And have you been seeing rainbows on your path or the cross? Who course. did the best rainbow? So uh, far? I think the best rainbow was in Carleon uh, on day four when I couldn't walk anymore. Uh, I had all of my uh, feet were in blisters. Um, bad uh, decision on foot, uh, footwear. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, they are healing up now. Yeah, this isn't round uh, Wales on flip-flops, so yes. I take it. Wow! So, um, since then, I, I got a pair of flip-flops, and then I've been, I've been walking in flip-flops. But <laughs> don't do it, don't do it. Yes, uh, I, I if you're going up on a, on a mountain, don't do it, okay? <laughs> it's a no-no. No, absolutely, but you were one of those rare people that saw the mist clear in snow. We are a big, small country. There is a big conversation that you've been having as part of this walk. But it sounds like people have really wanted to have that conversation and really smiled as you've passed through their communities. What a list! Yes, I know. Um, so far, all of, all of these places, and some of them are misspelled, I'm really sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but all of these places have been amazing and so welcoming. Uh, people in Wales are just the best. Like, literally, I travel the world with, uh, with work and I, I cannot tell you how amazing this place is. Yeah, it's been a joy to meet you and Thunder Pretty G looks huge on there as well. <laughs> Good luck with the last 200 miles. Thank you so much. Second start on the left and straight on to Newtown. And from us, in platform one at Langothan, we're still waiting for a train. It's back to the studio. Rob, thank you very much indeed. I think you should join him for a couple of miles. <laughs> Don't you? Uh, weather time now and uh, Ruth joins me uh, in the studio. How's it looking for uh, Jani's walk at the weekend? Sunshine? Words to live by, don't climb mountains in flip-flops. Uh, sunshine, yes, and a whole lot of rain to go with it too. In fact, almost perfect conditions for staying in tonight and watching the first in a brand new series of Coast and Country. I am braving both the weather and the waves to head out to Grassholm, an island off the coast of Pembrokeshire, home to Wales's only gannet colony. At this time of the year, the Pembrokeshire Islands are home to thousands and thousands of seabirds and, well, actually, it's not a bad place to call home, is it? Today, I'm heading out to Grassholm to experience something I've not seen before, a colony of over 36,000 gannets. Grassholm lies a few miles off the West Wales coast and is the oldest RSPB reserve in Wales. It's home to the only gannet population in Wales and this is the third largest colony in the world. Joining me today is Greg Morgan, the island's manager. 
Greg, we're heading out to Grasshoe, which is home to gannets and an awful lot of gannets. Why there in particular? What, what makes it so special for the gannet? Well, you see, as we get out there, it's a very uh, remote location and uh, that's key. So they're uh, safer out there. They're away from uh, ground uh, predators like uh, rats and stoats. They've evolved over millions of years to nest uh, in this biosecure fashion. And um, you'll see as well that it's quite windy out there and that's another key factor for them. Um, they're very big birds, so um, they need the wind to take off. Grasshome is actually a very small island. Now, you can't actually get onto it, but you can certainly see and hear the birds from quite a way off. Greg, there is no doubt it is a truly spectacular sight. I've never seen that before, but when you say the island turns white, it, it, it is white, isn't it? Yeah, you can see the birds uh, behind us tightly packed in there yeah and um, it's not at random if you look at them carefully you'll see that there's about a one to two meter space in between them and it's just about far enough out of the neighbor's bill is there enough room for what 36,000 pairs over there yeah well we're on the the side of the island now where they started so right. was, back in the 1800s the first few pairs colonized on this side um, and this is the southwest to northwest side, which is the windiest side, which yeah. will help them get the lift to take off. You now, this is the prime real estate. Get up. <laughs> Gannets are the UK's largest seabirds. They eat a diet of various fish, which they catch by diving headfirst into the water. They can dive from a height of around 30 metres and hit the water at speeds of up to 60 miles an hour. Just standing here watching them is such a great experience. And you can share that experience, that and plenty more on Coast and Country, 7 o'clock here on ITV Cymru Wales. The yeah. elephant in the room there, John, the smell. <laughs> 36,000 birds, Tell us more. one rock, an <laughs> awful lot of guano, shall we say. I'll just leave it there. It's Friday, we don't want this when we're having our tea yet. Yeah, but at least you had a bit of sunshine and fairly calm seas. Yeah, it was, it was actually rougher than it looked. You just ask our producer, Susan, bless her, who does not fare very well, and I'll say no more. Um, right. But yeah, uh, weather-wise, it's been beautiful this week, hasn't it? It is, however, all changed. And I probably don't need to tell you if you set foot outside today. We've had rain. I absolutely love this picture. These are the skies over Cowbridge in the Vale of Glamorgan. That was snapped by Alan Rees Thomas earlier this morning. And it sort of sets the scene, if you like, the tone of things to come as we head through into the weekend. Because, well, as I said, things look set to turn increasingly unsettled. Here we go in a little more detail. Healthy. Transport for Wales. Proud sponsors of ITV Cymru Wales Weather. So the high pressure is now a dim and distant memory. Low pressure very much dominates our weather story over the next few days, typically just in time for the weekend. We've got a cold front that will rattle through quite quickly tonight. And then as we head through into Saturday and Sunday, it's just a swirling mess of low pressure. And that means heavy, possibly thundery downpours, particularly for the start of the weekend. Again, showery rain on Sunday. But throughout, we're going to have strong winds. And that, of course, means it's going to feel much fresher than it has done recently. And I don't think there's any sign of things settling down anytime soon. The hot sunshine has uh, packed its back and gone somewhere a little bit warmer. The picture out there at the moment is mixed. We have a cold front that will work its way through tonight. Again, being blown on a strengthening breeze, so it'll go through quite quickly. But if you catch a downpour, it's likely to be on the heavy, even thundery side. And then as that clears, always a chance of a shower or two. But by the early hours, we could see some drier conditions tucking in and possibly some clear skies. So temperature-wise, nothing too much to worry about. Lows of 12 or 13 because of the breeze out towards coastal areas. But actually, under clear skies in more sheltered rural spots, we could dip to around 9 or 10 in Celsius. So for some, quite a chill in the air. An unsettled start to your weekend, I think it is safe to say it looks a little bit like this. There will be a scattering of showers which could well merge into something a little bit heavier, more prolonged as the day wears on. But that being said, we'll also see some dry weather and possibly some sunshine. If you catch the sunshine, it won't feel too bad. Don't get caught out though, despite any cloud, any showers and strong winds. We are looking at level six on the UV scale and that of course means a relatively short burn time, so just be careful. Wind speeds will, as I mentioned, picking up the pace and we could actually see gales developing through the clean peninsula and parts of Anglesey too. Not surprisingly then, the temperature's down even on today's values. Very disappointing for the time of year. And it's a similar setup then as we head through into the second part of the weekend. All very unsettled. Travnidiaeth Cymru yn falch i noddi tywydd ITV Cymru Wales. Hello, summer. 
Piri sponsors ITV Pollen Count. Well, as the weather turns increasingly unsettled, it's actually slightly better news if you are suffering with hay fever at the moment. Grass and nettle pollen airborne. We've got moderate to high levels as we head through into the weekend. I think we've got time for a hedgehog update. I think it'd be rude not to. So in case anybody missed the programme earlier this week, I've had very funny noises in the back garden. We bought a very cheap and cheerful trail cam from uh, an online store and we managed to capture in all its splendid glory one little hedgehog in our back garden. I'm happy to say you can just see a little face poking out there. One oh. hedgehog has now been joined by another. We think oh. possibly a Mr and Mrs because they're solitary. Can you hear that? That's their snuffling noises. That's the noises they make. Um, so basically they're solitary. So they only get together to mate and to have family. So the hope is, around about this time of the year, one joined by another, and then we could have lots of little hoglets, as they're officially called. So I'm really, really excited about keep posted. Could be a big weekend in your Absolutely. household. <laughs> and that is it for another week. Richard Morgan will be back from all of us on the programme. Thanks for watching. Boris Johnson says he'll keep on fighting after a by-election bruising. It's time to show Boris the door. In Tiverton, a huge Tory majority is lost to the Lib Dems. And in Wakefield, Labour reclaim a brick in the so-called Red Wall. So what does this mean for the Prime Minister? Have you voted Conservative in the past? Always. Never again. Well, not what he's Prime Minister. Why not? Look, I'm not going to pretend uh, these are brilliant results. I'm, we've got to listen, we've got to, we've got to learn. On top of it all, the party chair, Oliver Dowden, quits. Previously a close ally to the PM, who once again appears to be under pressure. And that pressure continuing for Boris Johnson, thousands of miles away in Rwanda, with a potentially tricky meeting with Prince Charles, also tonight. Outrage in America as abortion is effectively made illegal for millions of women after the Supreme Court overturned a case that has stood for 50 years. And here, Katie Price avoids jail for breaching a restraining order against her ex-husband's fiancé. This is the ITV Evening News with Lucrezia Millerini. Good evening. The Prime Minister and the Conservative Party are licking their wounds tonight after losing two by-elections in a humiliating double blow. In Tiverton and Honiton, the Lib Dems overturned a majority of almost 25,000. And in Wake...